Hi, welcome to the YouTube channel for the Renaissance English History Podcast. Um, today we are talking about the biggest event of the year in 1527, a seismic event with far-reaching effects and implications that would shape the course of history. I am, of course, talking about the sack of Rome. If you are new here, very special warm welcome to you. I am your host, Heather Tesco, and I've been podcasting on Tudor England since 2009. This is the channel where I put all of my episodes from all of my podcasts, as well as loads of extra content like this video right here. Quick reminder, TudorCon is about seven weeks away, and you can still get tickets to come in person. Three days of feasting, new friendships, talks from leading Tudor historians and bloggers in beautiful Lancaster County, Pennsylvania, in a restored barn that's a winery next to the Pennsylvania Renaissance Fair. And you can, of course, get streaming tickets as well. So englandcast.com slash TudorCon is the ticket, is the link to come in person. And then englandcast.com slash TudorCon online for the streaming tickets. So also, if you're one of my regular watchers, you'll notice my background is different today. And it's driving my husband nuts because it's really backlit. I'm on vacation in San Diego. This is the best I could come up with for a background. Um, and it's really backlit because it's sunny, um, way sunnier than it ever is in my house. And so it's driving my husband nuts. So I just need to get that out of the way. If you are being driven nuts by the level of, of backlitness that my background is, um, you're not alone. <laughs> and also because I like to share about my favorite pens on this channel. So I'm away for a couple of weeks. You can tell I'm a pen nerd because this is what I've brought with me for my pens. Okay, so this is the first bag of pens that I brought with me. These are really good Amazon brand felt tip, like um, like flare kind of pens, and they come in amazing colors. And there's a pack, you get a pack of 40 for like 20 bucks on the, like Amazon brand, oh, the Amazon basics, I'm dropping. <laughs> so that's the first thing that's in here. And then, you know, I've got a bunch of gel pens and stuff because there's only, there's, you know, two weeks, I'm going to use all of these pens, clearly. Um, my favorite pen in the whole wide world ever, ever. This came from W.H. Smith. And if you uh, can get to a W.H. Smith, I love this um, roller ball, that needle point. Such a fan. Every time I go to England, I got to stop at W.H. Smith and stock up on these. Um, and that's that's my hot tip on the W.H. Smith pen. They last longer than regular roller balls. I'm a really big fan. So that was that was this one bag, right? You would think that would be enough pens for two weeks away, right? One would think that. Oh, no, no, no. There's this whole bag, too. It's such an obsession. Such an obsession. I love these paper me. I See, I bring this along thing. I'm going to color with them. I have a coloring book with me, too. But I don't because I make these videos. So here we are. That's my pen share for the day, making lots of noises. What pen are you using? I would love to know. Oh, then I bought some pens yesterday that are right over here um, because I didn't have enough. These are, they were supposed to be metallic color. I love the Pentel G, or the Pilot G2 seven millimeter was the first gel pen I ever wrote with. Remember very clearly, a woman at my office brought it back and to my cubicle and said, you got to try out this pen. It's amazing. It was the year 2000, all the way back to the year 2000. And then I bought a pack of them at the grocery store and I've always been a fan. But anyway, they're supposed to be like metallic colors. So I gave them a try and I'm not super impressed. I mean, they're all right. I'm not super impressed, but yeah, that you guys, I have issues. I have pen issues, super pen issues. Now, you came here to find out about the sack of Rome. So I'm going to talk to you about this. <laughs> okay, let's get into it. The sack of Rome. This was not merely a skirmish between nations. It was a convulsion that shook the very pillars of society and cultures across the continent, set off a chain reaction. The aftershocks, of course, were felt all the way in England, and it affected Henry VIII's divorce from Catherine Varagon. We need to go back and look at European politics in the early 16th century to fully understand it. 
Of course, it was a complex chessboard of alliances and rivalries, France, Spain, Holy Roman Empire, the papacy, England, with, you know, a ceaseless struggle for dominance. The narrative starts when Pope Clement VII, a man known more for his love of arts than for his political acumen, decided to pit the strength of the papal states against that of the Holy Roman Emperor Charles V. The Pope joined the League of Cognac, which was an alliance including France, in the hope of maintaining the balance of power. However, Charles V was no ordinary adversary. He was not only the Holy Roman Emperor, he was also the King of Spain, and he held considerable sway over territories in Europe. The initial move in this high-stakes game of politics came after the Battle of Pavia in 1525. Charles's forces delivered a crushing blow to the French. The French king, Francis I, found himself in captivity, and then the Pope's alliance was left exposed and vulnerable. Interesting note about when the French king was in captivity. It's a very interesting book called Game of Queens by Sarah Griswood. I've interviewed her here on this channel. I'll try to find the link and uh, put it in. It was years ago, but she talks a lot about the women, the way women ruled with soft power in the 16th century. And then, of course, you even get the first queen regnants of uh, ever really in European history through the 16th century with Mary I, then Elizabeth I in England. Um, but when Francis I was in captivity, his sister did a lot to try to free him and did a lot of work uh, and act as regent in some cases. And, and it was a really big deal when he was in captivity that his sister was able to, to take over. So I'm going to find a link to that interview because it's it's a little interesting sidebar. So Francis is in captivity. Then the army that Charles V employed was ragtag but formidable, consisting largely of German mercenaries and Spanish conquistadors. They were seasoned soldiers, but also they were men left unpaid often due to constant military engagements and the empire's strained finances. They moved southward through the Italian peninsula, discontent festered, and Rome stood precariously in their path. The Pope was aware of the impending doom and actually attempted to negotiate to no avail. Rome's defenses were paltry compared to the pent-up fury of Charles' soldiers, hungry for spoils. In May 1527, they breached Rome's city walls. Of course, Rome was like supposed to be this completely holy place, right? With the Vatican, the seat of, of the Pope. So they breached the city walls. And what followed was an eight-month-long catastrophe that historians would later name the Sack of Rome. The Eternal City, once the beacon of the Renaissance, was subjected to ruthless looting unspeakable violence and widespread destruction, a level of devastation not seen since the sack of the Vandals in the fifth century. So, I mean, this is something that we often hear about, especially in English history, just about the effect that that had when the Pope was held captive by Charles, who was, of course, um, Catherine of Aragon's nephew. But really for Europe, this was a huge deal to, to have Rome sacked like this. The aftermath was swift and calamitous. Pope Clement found himself a prisoner within the walls of the Castle Sant'Angelo. His spiritual and temporal authority was greatly diminished, and the once majestic city of Rome lay in ruins. The repercussions were felt far beyond the city walls. The Italian wars raged on, with Italy becoming a battleground for foreign powers. However, of course, this reached even England, like we talked about. Henry was embroiled in his battle to get free of Catherine of Aragon, seeking an annulment. And the sack of Rome placed the Pope under Charles's control, which would influence the result that Henry would get. Clement probably feared further antagonizing Charles and became increasingly reluctant to grant the annulment. The Pope's inaction over the matter drove Henry to take the decision of immense consequence, which would be breaking away from the church and founding the Church of England with himself as the head. And now, of course, that's remembered as the start of the English Reformation. This decision would fundamentally alter England's religious, 
cultural and political landscape for centuries to come. So the sack of Rome in 1527 was not an isolated incident. It was a significant domino in the complex cascade of 16th century politics and power struggles. Its effects were far-reaching, shaping the religious and political fabric of the nations. So there we have it, our little introduction to the sack of Rome. Thank you so much for watching and for being here with me. If you have made it to the end of this video and enjoyed it, even with all the pen discussions, I hope I earned your press of the like button and subscription to my channel where I put out videos like this almost every day. It really helps me to grow the channel and reach new people. And who doesn't want their YouTube algorithm tutorified? Am I right? Thanks so much for watching and I will see you in the next video.